So uh, uh, two years ago almost, uh, well, maybe it has been two years, uh, probably uh, at an event after Open Source Bridge, I uh, uh, got together with a bunch of indie web developers and they kind of got me going on something I've been wanting to do for a long time, which was make a version of Wiki that didn't have a central server. And so uh, that was two years. I've been working on it for two years. You know, I wish I could say it was successful as the original Wiki. It's not there yet, but I decided to concentrate on what I've learned in the process, stay with the vision. It'll happen when it happens. But uh, this is sort of a status report on one aspect of that, which uh, uh, I, I have here for you today. And hopefully we can do a, a little bit of coding if I use my time wisely. So uh, one of the things that I think, uh, you know, I talk about working uh, in a wiki. You know, wikis are great for recording how to work, but it's not a place where you work. You know, you can get lots of instructions about how your company manages your, you know, paid time off or whatever it is. It'll be there, but you can't go there and register your paid time off, you know, because, uh, you know, wiki is first and foremost a document. So uh, here's the kind of thing you can use the web for. This is, I call the kind of schema form because, uh, you know, this is like a direct access to fields in a database. And that's what most people think about using a computer and it's pretty awful. Here's another version. This is where you realize that, you know, data moves around in a computer and you try to model that by, you know, wiring up something. Uh, and I think of this as kind of the flow model, and it's, it's a powerful model, but not so powerful that it doesn't break down routinely. Anytime I've ever built anything with this, I feel like, boy, I sure don't want to move a single wire because it'll break in a way that I won't be able to debug. So it's not, uh, it, it's not awesome. So here, here's, what, here's what Federated Wiki is like. It's, it's a bunch of wiki pages, and what's cool is these can come from different sites, and you can drag things between them, and so that makes it wiki-like, even though it comes from different sites. But the other thing is, I can put things on here that communicate between those pages. This has been Photoshopped to put those arrows on there, and this is a, a colleagues that are working on uh, a, a modern version of the pattern language to describe environmentally responsible uh, neighborhood construction. So it's, it's something where it'll compute greenhouse gas and an impact on the tax base and all the things that urban designers worry about. Uh, so this is a place where you can go in there and do work having to do with design and uh, actually have it just do the calculation. So the calculation part is pretty interesting uh, the other thing is, because this is kind of a pipeline, like the Unix pipeline, Unix and the small tools loosely joined, the pipe operator is sort of my metaphor of casual computing. It goes way back to the 60s. You know, it turns out that it, Kernig and Ritchie's boss had been promoting this for a decade before they ever had a Unix, and he talked them into putting the pipe into Unix and it was because it was a model of computing that he thought would be powerful. So I'm trying to, to get that, but make wiki pages instead of Unix commands be the element of composition. Uh, so let me sidestep a little bit and talk about federation. I talk about this a lot, but I need to explain it in case you happen to miss it. How many people have heard me talk before about federated wiki? Okay, uh, two thirds, so I'll go quickly. Uh, the important way I describe it now is wiki shared uh, space on a disk through a web interface. I'm doing the reverse, shares between a bunch of disks with a uh, in-browser interface. So it all happens in the browser, very simple. Uh, what, what it means is you can have somebody who's different than everybody else can participate. So, so I have a sequence of slides I've shown before. I'm going to do it in reverse order. Instead of zooming in, I'm going to zoom out. But I want to start with talking about how calculation happens. So here's some pages from the one site that are overlaying another site being mixed together. And uh, they're being used for different purposes. Here's some data. 
that data is going into a calculator. And this is one I want to show you, how to write a calculator that works in this environment. This is information moving between sites, but it doesn't go to the sites. It's all between information pulled from the sites into your browser and ultimately to, to some visualization. So this back and forth is important. And here's the detail. Here's each one of these paragraphs has a different markup. You know, if it's just plain text, it's a simple markup that looks familiar. About the only markup is the square brackets that Wikipedia made famous for making links. But when you get into here, something where it's actually computing values, this is just doing a calculation down here. I produce a, a specialized markup that <laughs> looks pretty simple. You know, you just put numbers where you want numbers and you put capitalized verbs like sum or product or polynomial where you want those. And then the rest is just labels. So this is like assignment statements. And uh, what's interesting is this is the code behind it that makes sense of these words. And it's not complicated. You know, it, you take the name which was passed in, that's that word, you do a switch statement, and then you do what it says. And, and this, you know, uh, decoding or dispatching is like so fundamental to uh, computer programming. I think it has to be in a wiki where you actually do things. You know, of course, the original markup was something kind of like that, but it was just about making HTML. This is about actually doing things. So one of the interesting things here, this was all simple except for polynomial was important my sponsor in this work had big ugly polynomials so it called the routine called polynomial and it reached back into the wiki with this little command here to pull up a wiki page to get the coefficients for a polynomial so so I'm referring to computations and the computations refer back to the wiki and it, it's a very nice environment for uh, talking about things you do so backing up now, what's neat is as you look at these sites from different directions, they appear differently. If I came in looking at that site, I would just see the orange. If I come in looking at this site, this site refers to this, so I see the blue plus the orange. This is like overwriting in object-oriented programming. The reason this is important is I want to support communities of interest that overlap. I was sponsored by a global manufacturer. Here's this little, these are two wikis that are cooperating in this, two global manufacturers that, you know, might compete in one realm and cooperate in another. Uh, here they're talking about, I was supported working on material uh, sustainability information. Here are the innovative suppliers that could cooperate with a little more distance, maybe uh, sharing fewer pages. On the other side is the NGOs and other advocates. There's a cooperation there. And it, be, because I don't force you to share the same server and consider you completely isolated if you're on different servers, because I merge the servers, these all flow together in the right way. Data journalists kind of paying attention to the NGOs, paying attention to all this. Finally, this is important to me, that all be founded on science that there's a way for the scientific understanding to drift into this and be the basis of this conversation. And out the top, I wanted to say the public, but I'll say the interested public, because this content will be, this is people's work that you're looking at. All right, this is today, what I want to talk about is how we take words like sum and product, you already saw it, and give them meaning, and that's with uh, uh, dispatching. And this, this, I decided that wiki, if this is going to be a powerful wiki, it's got to be based on really fundamental ideas. And this, this idea came from uh, Ada Lovelace's analysis, or actually, yeah, it was the analysis of Charles Babbage's analytic engine in, when she was asked to translate the German that this guy wrote, he did an analysis of it. She translated that back to English for Babbage, and as a footnote almost, wrote twice as much in what she called the notes. Notes on the uh, 
the thing. And she made the observation that he didn't make and he didn't make, which was, this isn't about calculating. This is about representing anything. That the operations, well, here, you know, it, it's easy to find online. I just said uh, Ada Lovelace meaning, and I found this is her notes. Here's where meaning popped up. I, I mean, it's long, but you know, there in the margin it says, well, here's where the hot spot is. So I scrolled to that. I read only one paragraph. I found this line, and it says, by the word operation, remember operations were on these punch cards, you know, long strings of it going through the machine. By the word operation, we mean processes which alter mutual relationships, and especially this, about all subjects in the universe. This was the inspiration that the computer was fantastically powerful, even though they never actually got it built. So smart thinking there. Now, uh, I recently looked up bytecode dispatch, and this is a hot topic. Uh, you know, uh, dynamic languages became much more uh, powerful when people figured out how to <coughs> interpret one language on top of a conventional computer. Smalltalk really pioneered this. I was a small talker. It's recently been applied to JavaScript. It makes JavaScript a much nicer language today than just a couple of years ago. Uh, so here, dispatch is that process of figuring out what a byte means in the context of something else that's meaningful, like uh, arithmetic or message sent. Code with meaning. So we're establishing meaning. Just two weeks ago, I saw this out-of-the-box computing company. And they were giving a talk. I think it's amazing. The out-of-the-box company, this is, they, they wasted no money on, on website design. <laughs> But they did manage to get a box around the phrase, <laughs> out of the box. <laughs> but it was a great video at Stanford a couple weeks ago on a new architecture for computing. And, and here it is, they say, one of the features, the, 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 the formatting and decoding of instructions. And, and this is a fabulous thing. I'm, I'm going to really flip through them really quickly. I was going to explain them, but I tried this last night to people who understand this stuff. And they, they gave me that kind of hazy look. But what's cool is, here's the memory in the chip, the cache. Here's the decoder. Here's the part that does the work. Uh, observes if you want to have more in-loop caches, you have to make the cache bigger. And then the distances get longer, and everything slows down. So they have this cool thing where they put all the arithmetic instructions in one cache with one decode, and all the flow control instructions in another cache with another decode keeping the, co the cache size small enough that this can be fast. And then they merge them when it runs. It's wild if you're into computer architecture. Out of the box. Heard it here first. There's no meaning when those words have, when those bytes are in the cache. It has meaning when it passes through the decoder. The decoder is the thing that gives the bytes meaning. Here they've made it faster by having two separate and dedicated ones on different sides of the uh, execute engine. Well, I'm doing the same thing here. Here's my federated wiki. I'll put a little uh, JavaScript plugin in there. Uh, I can actually talk to something else down here. This was a slide from a talk a couple weeks ago at uh, uh, Node PDX, which is online as a video. Talk a lot about what I'm doing here spewing ones and zeros out of hardware that's attached to the server, which I can now do because I can attach something to my server and not interfere with that server. So this is cool because I have reinterpretation of the meaning on both sides because it is done by the same markup. Brings me to markup. How am I doing time-wise? OK, great, because I was hoping to code. Oh, maybe we won't code. Oh, or I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, you have, you have a half an hour. Half an hour, perfect. <laughs> All right, so, so this, is, this is a Federated Wiki page. There's a special plug-in here that says uh, this page, whenever it's revised, it needs to be sent out as a report. And it has a schedule daily for some participants, weekly for others. 
here's what the page looks like if I double click this. Here's the markup. I have this convention of capital, capitalized words are meaningful to the dispatcher and the rest is just data and they kind of compound weekly on Friday at noon. You know, it's just, uh, just kind of neat. Uh, I'll skip that slide for speed. Well, I thought I had code there. No. Am I going backwards? Oh, oh, here I'm just showing, ah, what's cool about this is that uh, this is interpreted locally. It says, by the way, the actual sending of the reports is by a little script here that I run on cron called uh, post.js. And uh, uh, so it's just reading my database. Anything I write on there gets sent out. This shows it getting sent out, again, having meaning. Here's, uh, here's what that post.js looks like. Uh, and uh, here's the line where I say, figure out if it's time to send something out, get the report, advance it from now to find out when it needs to be next sent. Here's the same code in the client and the server. This is the date handling. And this is something I hope you'll, you know, a switch statement with a bunch of words and then the date arithmetic. And this is just a loop that turns out, you know, says when I say daily, it says, oh, okay, midnight, when I, or, you know, or, or I think I said weekly. If I say weekly, when I say Friday, it advances to Friday of every week. And when I say noon, it advances to noon on Friday. So it, uh, it's a nice, simple little interpreter. All right, this is what I was hoping to get to with enough time to show it off. Here's another little interpreter. I, I, I would love to do something more serious, but I figured dates and status reports would bore you. So this is a cool little thing that as a uh, Raskin did a few years ago when, when JavaScript was just starting to get powerful. This is a JavaScript based little toy drawing tool called Algorithm Inc. And you write little algorithms in simple rules and it executes the rule. It has this kind of cool thing that if a rule is repeated, if there's two versions of the rule, it picks them at random. So it's great for drawing random things this little spiral isn't random. It's great for drawing spirals too. But uh, surrounding this little interpreter, he has this whole framework for editing and saving and running and stuff like that. And this whole part up here, three quarters of his application, Wiki already does that. Because Wiki's there about sharing. What Wiki doesn't do is have this little calculator. So what we want to do is put a little calculator that calculates images and do it in a wiki plugin so that we can pass it around with everybody else in the same wiki that we might be discussing, you know, the environmental properties of materials, we could also draw spirals. So here it is. Here's, I wrote this on Sunday and I started playing with it and I started drawing little, not spirals, but uh, you know, little blotches. And I made a, I wish I'd picked a better name, but I'm thinking, let's try this out. And I called the plugin Mumble Foo, right? But uh, here's the code, and uh, there's a little compiler. Here's the thing that actually draws the little red marks. And I just chose to draw right over the, the plugin. But uh, when I say left, when it gets that word, it comes down here and it runs the left routine through dispatching. And then the left routine manipulates some state. It says, turn it to the left a little bit. It keeps track in the state T, which stands for theta. I think I changed that to uh, degrees to EG in, uh, after I made the slide. But uh, this is, this is going to be a little toy. And let's, let's see if we can uh, code it up. My strategy is, first of all, I'll run a shell script, which will give me a skeleton. I'll write the compile routine, which you can see at the top there in line three. I'll write a pretty printer, which is how I interact with it. Uh, I'll write the routine that draws the marks. I'll write the apply function that runs the uh, left and right and go. And then if I get to it, I'll make the thing that actually recursively runs more programs. And when we're done, we'll get something that draws cool pictures different every time. Uh, we need a command line.
sign cd to smallest federated wiki. client code and I'll do dot slash make plug-in of uh, and we'll call this uh, mumble 2. So I'm going to have a plug-in called mumble 2. No such file or directory. Oh, I Proper use is always to hit tab dot sh. There. And I've got a little build thing that kind of tells me when it's uh, built, it's, it's talking to me. But the, uh, the important thing is I can come over here. This is where I have my uh, uh, wiki. Let's, let's blow that up to, to big. So here I have, this is on localhost. Here's some local content, uh, some new plugins. <coughs> Uh, I uh, mentioned that I have the MumbleFoo plugin, and I just made the Mumble2 plugin. And this is what you get. It says, here we'll describe the plugin, and here's some stuff. Um, and I guess I forgot to erase it from last time because there is stuff left in there. I'm sorry about that. Let's just erase that. That is, you know, right here. And uh, so now, uh, actually, let's let's just uh, uh, here's my here's my directory. Uh, here's the plugins. This is the smallest federated wiki project. I'm I'm going to make things simple by going and taking this mumble two and just discarding it, starting over. That way, you know that everything everything it does, you've seen it do here. Oh. Yeah, it's all on GitHub as a uh, smallest federated wiki. And I'll make sure in the notes, if somebody's already been there, why don't you just put in the notes for this talk, uh, the uh, URL. So now if I say, show me the mumble2, it says, can't find that plugin don't have a mumble2 plugin so uh, let's make it so it's building it and if I come over here and look I can see what it built there's a uh, mumble2 so it gives me a there it, it gives uh, it gives me a copy script template very tiny and it, and it uh, my little build step step made turn that into JavaScript also embedded in a plugin is the documentation. That's just Java, uh, JSON. And so when I come over here and look at it, now it's here. All right. So let's, uh, let's start writing. And of course, I'll write this really fast by uh, just copying from my other one. This is, uh, uh, I said the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a compiler and a pretty printer. So let's just get the compiler and the pretty printer and come over here and, and insert it. So uh, what I have here to start with is a, a function that will generate the view of the plugin and a function that will uh, do any editing that you want. So here it says on double click, edit. Both of these are past a div. And in you know, Java, or J, there's jQuery wrap div, so we put a dollar sign in there to remind us that it's jQuery. And then this is the uh, JSON of just that item that we're going to render. So we'll add to that uh, uh, a place to keep the code. That'll just be an array of statements. Here we're going to compile the text by resetting that. And for every line in the text, we're going to split it into words and push that array of words onto the, the list. Here's pretty prints. We'll pretty print the words. And so down here where I show the item text, let me, uh, let me write a little bit of code here. 
actually, let me just copy it, and that way I won't make a mistake. Uh, down here in init, I said, uh, pretty print each line and join them with VRs. So, so we should have a pretty printer here real quick. And, and so it's still small, 22 lines, half of it written by the script. And we come down here and see what it looks like. Uh, by the way, if, if in any of these, if I just tap the uh, the, the top uh, this, this uh, uh, flag, I call it here, it'll reload the page and just show me that. So uh, yeah, not looking encouraging. So uh, pretty wide line. line. Pretty. Well, this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid that I'd actually have to debug. This is where Google's tools are really handle handy. Let's just reload that and see if it complains anything. And it doesn't. That's too bad. Okay, somebody help me here. What did I do wrong? I take a line. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I did something wrong here. I didn't, don't think I even copied the code right here. Ah, that's it. The line of code. I have to call compile. Good, good catch. So, oh, here it is. Emit, compile the item. Ah, that's in <coughs> here. You need to come down and bring it down here. So every time I'm asked to emit something, before I emit this, I'll also just compile what, what that is. So that's, uh, let's see, there's add size two. We'll say uh, compile the uh, item, which we're passed in the text of the item. So that's just digging through the JSON. I think it's going to work better now. Unexpected indent. That means I didn't copy something right. Using spaces, actually. So that's, oh, look at that. See, that's a tab. Unfortunately, it's uh, sensitive to uh, white space, which you're never supposed to be. I, I thought this uh, coffee script was a sweet deal. Okay, so now we have our command language here. We're, we're, we're going to write something like uh, start, uh, let's uh, go, 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 because we're going to define the go command. So when we start, we'll go, go, go. That's going to be the definition of a function, and then that's going to be what we do with it. So uh, we're, we're a little rough start there. How, how am I doing time-wise? Have I got, You've got another uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Good. Well, are, are, am I boring everybody here? Or is this fun? Nope. Okay. So uh, let's go back to what I'm going to do is just to make things easy for myself. I'm going to remind myself because I have a little list of what to do. Uh, developed in the style of MumbleFoo, I can just call that up at any time and see what I described. So we've done the compiler, we've done the pretty printer. Now we want to do the marks uh, on the uh, page. So let's go find that code and copy it. And, and here what I did is, uh, there's lots of ways to draw, but I just, I just wrote a little function that, that, that adds a div every time uh, you do anything. And, and, and it's passed in this state which has an X and a Y and stuff like that. And I just, whatever the state of the computation is. And I don't actually have much of a computation, but I want to get some output first so that I can see what I'm doing. So I will... Uh, teach this thing how to, uh, to, to put marks on the page. Uh, 
let's put that right here. And, uh, uh, you know, this is a little bit of messing around here. I actually had to go online to figure out how to do this uh, styling to, to make it look cool. But uh, So that's Mark. And, and uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to I keep track of some state. And I'll, I'll, I'll do that right down here when we get started. Uh, I'll say, uh, oh, here's some good state. And, and for state, you know, you, you just use these little hash tables. And, and uh, so right down there, uh, after I've compiled, after I've done the initial thing, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, here's some state that has an x and a y and a theta and a place to draw. So state is that. And we should probably put a, a place to draw in here. And what I did is I just put in a little div in front of this. If you want to do that absolute positioning, uh, you actually have to do it inside of a relative block. So I, uh, I learned that the hard way. But here's a, here, here's a uh, inside a relative div. So I'm just making something called drawing. And I just stick it in here. I say position it relative. And then I put the other. You know, I could put this someplace else. I could draw anywhere I want. Then I go look up that thing and pass it in as part of the state. Now I think I have enough stuff to call my mark command. So let's, uh, let's try it here. And so after I define the state, I'll say mark the state. And we're working our way into making a real computer here. Uh, let's see. It also says, uh, was that complaining to me? Oh, no. All right. And uh, here's, here's our mumble uh, two. Look at that. That's, that's something. I think if I'm, I'm cool, I can even zoom in. Look at that. Nice little box. It's even turned on its angle because I said 45 degrees. So, so I am almost ready to really get rocking here. Let me just figure out how to make my window go small again. Go. Now, uh, we need a, a few more things to draw with. And they're, uh, they're, they're all easy, like uh, uh, I had uh, uh, go, which will move forward, uh, left and right. Those will be, uh, that's my language right there. And I can come in here and just teach it to do that much. And I'm not making it a computer yet. I'm just going gonna, just gonna to call these directly in JavaScript just to make sure they work. So here's a, a go left, right, and uh, let's down here right where we did. Uh, oh, and by the way, every time I go, I mark where I ended up. So uh, I'll move my x and y. Uh, left and right just turn. And uh, uh, so here, we'll mark this date, and we'll say uh, go. Let's see. The new state is after going based on the current state. That's, uh, that's worth repeating a few times. Copy, paste, 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 paste. Just. Got about 30 plugins. That's why it's slow. Yeah. Look at that. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. So now, let's make it compute. Or better yet, let's just check and see what, how far along our list is. So we got a pretty printer. We did marks and a div to hold them. Now we need to write. Oh, look at that. That's the old one drawing. Uh, uh, it's random, so sometimes it really gets carried away here. Uh, write an apply function that interprets primitive commands like go left and right. So we need apply, and that's our next goal. Apply. Uh, and this is. Uh, this is where we actually start doing stuff that's cool. Remember, we've seen this how many times already, uh, where we do a switch on words. Here it says, every time we say go, just call the go function, and so forth. So if we do that, I'm just going to grab a few other things I see here, just so I can uh, 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 jump ahead. And we'll look at that. We're not going to use those until we actually call ourselves recursive. Wow, that one got pretty good there. 
so uh, I've got the commands to, to move around, and let's paste these in here. And what I've added is uh, fetch we'll see in a minute, uh, fork we'll see in a minute, copy we'll see in a minute. We, we've got apply, you give it a list of words and a state to start with, and it'll uh, run those words. Uh, it'll also put a little logging in there because you can tell I had bugs last weekend. So, uh, oh, we probably ought to call it. We call apply with some words. So I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to say take our, uh, what was it called? Code? Code. I'm going to say apply, uh, and we'll just start with the first line. Code sub zero uh, and the state. So that's going to apply the first line of code to the state, and let's see if that draws anything. Yep. Five minutes. Okay. And any questions on this? Good time to ask questions. I can. Uh, so so here I say go go go, and when I save it, ah right I have to reload the JavaScript. Look at that. Go 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 goes three times. If I say uh, 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 let's go right, 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 go, 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 go. There we go. So, so it's it's doing my program. Uh, I think I even threw enough stuff in there that I could say. Uh, after you've done that, uh, go back to start. There, I do. Drew a little hexagon off to the, the side, and it's still going around and around in circles. So we actually uh, uh, finished just in the nick of time. And oh, I, I, there's one more thing I want to show you just because it's cool, and that is uh, Algorithm Inc is, is if, if you don't do my thing, you ought to go look up that algorithm, Inc. Uh, I knew that I'd done one here, so I did something called Morse Code Forever. Uh, I looked for the image, I, uh, I found all this, that, that it's all over the internet, you know. And uh, if, if we repeat that, let's go for uh, Morse Code Forever. Uh, Oh, I'm not on the internet. Okay, you look up Morse code forever. If you click that first one, it'll have a pointer to Algorithm Inc. and run my little Morse code spiral, which looks really cool. It's the kind of things you can draw that way. Questions? Yes? Um, so I, I feel like you have two different ideas. The better is with the idea. Yeah, one idea. And then there's the active. The that you can actually do stuff. Right. Do you so so it's the idea of doing stuff in an environment that is intrinsically shared. So are those things separate ideas, or do you think they interact? Uh, two separate ideas, you know, in the sense that a computer is good for computing, and it's good for communicating. So the computing is because you've got dispatch in there, and the communicating is because we hook them all together. So all I've done is reinvent, you know, the world of computing in a social sense, but I've done it in a way it's Creative Commons, Attribution, Share Alike. It's a community. And uh, I'm asserting some uniformity that wasn't present in the original uh, web. Uh, and then the guy who invented that spent the next two decades trying to make it semantic. So this is really another go at the semantic web. Yeah? Do you ever feel like if you renamed this hypercard to it would have been It might. It might. <laughs> but that's their word, and Wiki's my word. Yeah. More questions? Yes? Your little language is sort of like your email thing looks a lot like McCarthy's list. Like yeah, yes. Not general. So is, is there a reason that you're writing little languages instead of a general purpose? If you make, yes. Why, why didn't I not make it fully general? Well, if I only had one language, then I'd make it general. But the joy here is I get to make little languages that are just barely powerful enough to do the work I want to do. Kind of like the command line arguments on a typical Unix utility, you know. Uh, and, and that way you don't spend your time debugging. 
They also pass around a lot better because people can look at them and read them. You know, computer programming in a general sense, you cannot resist the temptation to just keep pouring more into that one program. And then all of a sudden it just goes beyond you and anybody else. So, so it's a, a small and small is beautiful kind of philosophy. But the one thing I want to bring to Wiki is dispatching. That's why I thought it was important. It is a learning I've had in the last two years. I didn't know that I was setting out to do this, but it, it emerged. So, and here you get it for free. All right, thank you for your attendance and your patience as I kind of fat fingered a little bit of that, but uh, we got through it. All right, thank you.